I hope you like VR versions of games that no one asked for, paid mods, and trailers of games that have already existed for a while, because if you don't, this was one of the worst E3 press conferences that I've ever seen in my entire life. Bethesda went ahead and dropped presumably a significant amount of money to throw together this press conference, drum up all this hype for it, and come out and show us a bunch of information that we either already knew or don't give a fuck about. First of all, this press conference was only 40 minutes long when the average press conference is like 60 minutes, so you know that something's already kind of wrong. And it's not like it was 40 minutes because Bethesda didn't want to waste anyone's time with ancillary nonsense because the first half of this press conference was fucking jam-packed with it. I'll go ahead and break down everything that was covered in this press conference because it's such a short list that it's not like it's difficult to do. So first off, we've got VR, everyone's favorite gimmick. First off, you've got Doom VFR, so it's not even like you can't walk around. It's not like the same game, but you walk around. You have to do the ridiculous thing where you like teleport where you want to go. It's fucking awful. You know what made Doom really good last year? It's fluid controls that felt amazing on mouse and keyboard. You know what this game version of the game doesn't have? Fluid controls. Then we get Fallout 4 VR, which you can actually move around without teleporting everywhere, but it just looks like a worse version of the game that everyone's already played. Then we get a sneak peek. Oh, no, it's not a sneak peek. We've known about this for months and uh, most people don't care. It's an expansion for the Elder Scrolls Online. It's the Morrowind expansion that no one asked for. Uh, the Elder Scrolls Online, they say it has 10 million players. I realize that is like a lifetime amount of players, but uh, I played that game. Woo! Not good. So I don't know who the fuck's playing it. I don't know who the fuck is buying this Morrowind expansion. Have fun with that. That's your fucking problem now. Oh, this is my favorite run right here. The the Creation Club. Now, you might remember that debacle a while back, I don't know, it was a few years ago at this point, where Bethesda decided to partner up with Steam to offer mods for Skyrim, but uh, but of a price tag on them. You know, pay a little bit to help the creators out. This backfired, like, drastically. Everyone lost their fucking minds, and, and for good reason. And uh, Bethesda's like, all right, well, well, we'll back off of this. We're not going to do this. No, they've, they've reversed once again because we're getting this dedicated platform now without Steam in there. I guess I guess they didn't want Steam. You know, it's like maybe they backed out because it's like, oh, you know what? You know, we're already uh, raking in some money from this, but it's like Steam's taking a little bit of the cut. Let's uh, let's just go full bore with it. So you can pay for some mods. It's uh, it's as bad as it sounds. Everyone's getting really mad about it. I like how they played it off. They played it off really coy. Oh, you can use credits to uh, get blah, 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 get your mods. And it's like, takes your brain one second. Oh, credits to get... Wait, where are the credits coming from? Oh, yeah, real money. That's right. Then they hit us up with the Elder Scrolls Legends. Now, you gotta, you gotta fucking... Uh, holy shit, so much Elder Scrolls stuff. And by the way, they've kind of... Uh, like, the Elder Scrolls and Skyrim are now interchangeable, which pisses me off. Because it's like, it's not just Skyrim. But whatever. The Elder Scrolls Legends, Heroes of Skyrim, an expansion pack for the Elder Scrolls Legends. What is the Elder Scrolls Legends? It's this uh, fucking Hearthstone ripoff game that we've known about for a while that no one gives a fuck about. So thanks for wasting my time. They show, they show a long ass trailer for a fucking card game. It's so unnecessary, it just drags on and on. If that wasn't enough Skyrim for your Skyrim for your Skyrim, we now have another Skyrim. Skyrim for Nintendo Switch. Hmm. Skyrim for Nintendo Switch. Doesn't that sound really familiar? Didn't we hear about that? Oh yeah, we heard about that like eight months ago when the uh, Switch got revealed and they showed Skyrim in the uh, in the trailer. For, hmm. That's interesting. You can, uh, if you really want, you can use an amiibo to uh, get these loot crates, kind of like you get a loot crate for an amiibo in Breath of the Wild. Except in this one, they hook you up with some armor to make you look like, uh, make you look like Link. Like, make you look like the whatever, like, whatever, imagine in your head the worst, like, Link armor mod in Skyrim, and that's what the armor looks like. So they really, they really came through with the extra effort on this one. Then we get Dishonored, Death of the Outsider. It's just a, it's just a pre-rendered trailer, no gameplay or anything like that. It's coming out really soon. Uh, you might be thinking, D didn't a Dishonored game just come out? You would, you would be right. That came out last year in the fall, Dishonored 2. So I think this is, this is either like a side thing or DLC, or an expansion, or maybe a separate game for like $20. Just some, some throwaway thing. It's not like a full-fledged fucking game. 
Don't you guys love gaming? Don't you love esports? Don't you want to have victory with your friends? Don't you want to be on ESPN? Because Bethesda's got you covered with Quake World Championships. Yes, Quake World Championships. Not for uh, not for old school Quake, but for the new one, Quake Champions, which I actually did get a chance to play a while back on the closed beta, uh, back when it was like there was like an NDA on it. I don't know why. No one fucking cares about the game anyway. It's this uh, free-to-play version of, of Quake where you have heroes, so it's basically like, think Overwatch, but like really watered down and then with like Quake gameplay. It's not a terrible game, but they ruin it with the free-to-play and the heroes. It's like, I just want everyone to be the same, but no, you gotta put heroes into it. And they show this long-ass fucking thing with these actors pretending to be pro gamers. They got their DX racer chairs, they've got their LED fans in their desktop PCs. Just fucking painful to watch. And they have an, a million dollar world championship. It's like, you know, it'd be a stretch already to have a North American championship, let alone a fucking world championship. Like, who the fuck is playing this game? Answer, no one. Now we get to the final two items. And I know it's like, wow, this video's not even eight minutes long yet. And we're already almost at the end. Yes, you would be correct. First off, we've got The Evil Within 2, the sequel that literally no one asked for. The Evil Within was a third person survival horror game made by uh, Shinji Mikam Mikami, the uh, creator of, uh, the director rather, for Resident Evil 4. Now The Evil Within, I didn't think it was like a, a bad game, but definitely not like good or even worthwhile. I would never recommend it to anyone. And it sold like, I, I thought it sold really badly. So here we are, puzzlingly with a fucking sequel and we're supposed to get excited for it now they didn't show any gameplay for it really like just brief snippets it was mostly like pre-rendered it was just mostly to be a more cinematic trailer looks like fucking shit the first game was pretty serious and and you know genuinely a little bit creepy this one's trying to be like all artsy you've got a million zombies running around think of like uh Remember Resident Evil 6 when it just went full bore with the action stuff, just bat, bat shit crazy, balls to the walls, and it was just fucking stupid as hell. That's what this looks like. And the one asked for it, it's going to sell fucking terribly. Then finally, the only worthwhile thing in this entire fucking press conference, a sequel to Wolfenstein The New Order, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. Now this looked, it was a pretty good uh, trailer, gameplay looks good, they've uh, increased the visual fidelity just a little bit, I hope they fix the PC issues, because that game like had this weird effect on PC, it was like a frame timing issue. Except the one difference with Wolfenstein 2 is that there is like this air of humor to it and, and sarcasm and trying to be silly, trying to have a little bit of social commentary I think, I mean if you really want to read into it. And the first game... I guess the first game did have a little bit of social commentary in it, but it was a it was a very serious game. Whereas this is like veering off into almost Borderlands levels of being f like trying to be funny and stuff. And it's a little it's it's like it's not cringy or anything like that. It looks fine. The game looks fine, but I don't understand the huge shift in tone. But you know, I have to play the game to find out. Yeah, so that's uh that's it. And then at this point, Pete Hines came out on stage and was surrounded by a background with a bunch of stars on it, and there's, like, spaceships flying around, and I'm like, hmm, that's kind of weird. You know, you might have heard of this game called Starfield, this idea that, that Bethesda's making a sci-fi space game that would be similar to Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Yeah, nah, they didn't show that. Pete Hines comes out, he's like, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and he just stood there for a little bit, and I'm like, ah, oh, he's, he's playing. There's still 20 minutes left in this press conference. Bethesda Game Studios is going to come out and show something like they did in 2015 with Fallout 4. They're going to give an in-depth look, like 20 minutes of solid gameplay. Nah, nah, they didn't, they didn't do that. Just, it just fucking ends. It was so, it was so surreal. I'm just sitting there looking at the screen. Everyone's on Twitter. Everyone's on Twitch chat being like, Ah, oh, it's, it's a prank, right? Like, uh, this isn't, it's not, it's not over. Yeah, it was, it was over. And, um, what, what a fucking terrible press conference. God fucking awful. It doesn't help that the two reveals here, the Evil Within 2 and Wolfenstein 2, the only two genuine reveals, both fucking leaked. Both of them leaked. And I think the Evil Within 2 was actually officially put out. I don't even think that was leaked. But uh, Wolfenstein 2, like, went up on Amazon. Everyone fucking knew about this. It's just a complete waste of everyone's fucking time. The real puzzling thing about this is that, you know, I understand why they wouldn't have Bethesda Games Works come out because the thing that Bethesda seems to be doing is that they don't want to show games that are coming out like in the distant future. They only want to show stuff that's coming out soon. 
So if Bethesda's game studio is working on a game that's coming out, while well, they're not going to show it here. But it begs the question, why have a fucking press conference, spend all this money, and, you know, they're going to make themselves look like asses. I don't think a single human being that watched this is like, oh, yeah, that was a great press conference. That was so interesting. That was good. I'm so excited for these games that I didn't know anything about. No one's going to be like that. So you got a situation where they spent all this money, they made themselves look like jackasses. Why didn't they just, you know, Evil Within, Wolfenstein 2, give them to like, let Microsoft show it. They could have used a few extra games. Or, you know, let Sony show it. Fucking anything else like this wasn't necessary. I would say let me know down below what you think of this press conference, but I already know what everyone that watched this press conference thinks of it. They think that it was fucking dog shit.